In this video, we're going to talk about the chain rule. The chain rule is the rule that allows you to take the composition of two functions, if you know the derivatives of the parts that, that make up the composition of the two functions. All right, here's the statement of the chain rule, right? We have a function h of x, and it is built from the composition of two functions, f of g of x. In other words, we uh, plugged in g of x into the function f, okay? Uh, in what follows, you'll hear me talk about the inside part and the outside part. Um, here, g will obviously be the inside part. It's inside the function f, and the function f will be the outside part here. So here is the statement of the chain rule. It says that uh, the derivative of h is going to be the derivative of f composed with g, right, times the derivative of g. So there's three steps, essentially, uh, to carrying out the chain rule. And so this is what I'll refer to as the three steps of the chain rule. So step number one is to take the derivative of f, okay? Later on, you'll hear me uh, refer to that as taking the derivative of the outside function, right? Because if you look at uh, the composition right here, right, f is the outside function, g is the inside function. So take the derivative of f and then compose f prime and g, all right? So take f prime and then put g, the function g, without doing anything to it, put it inside there, okay? So um, in, in what follows, when we go through the example, I will um, refer to that part usually as leave the inside part alone. Okay, so because you can kind of see here, um, if this is the original, right, f of g, right, then you sort of just leave g alone in the middle there. Technically, right, we are composing f prime and g. But a lot of times in this step, I will just say, hey, just leave the inside part alone. All right, step three of the chain rule, and this one's easy to forget, is to multiply by the derivative of the inside function, in this case, g. So multiply by g prime of x. So again, I will say that as multiply by the derivative of the inside part in what follows. Okay, so those are the three steps of the chain rule, and we'll go over that again um, uh, in... And what follows, again, I will kind of refer to those as inside parts and outside parts uh, when I talk about the three steps of the chain rule. All right, so that's how you carry out the chain rule. Uh, before we get to the example, uh, the first example, though, uh, what we need to do is to talk about, hey, when do you use the chain rule, right? Um, and when do you not use it? Well, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you're going to use the chain rule when the inside part of a function is more complicated than just x. Okay, so generally speaking, that's that's kind of how it's going to go. So in this table over here, over in the left column, I have a bunch of functions that we would not need to use the chain rule on, right? And those are, are pretty basic functions. This is a power function, right? So I would just use the power rule to take its derivative. Same thing here, right? The derivative of sine of x is cosine x. The derivative of ln x is 1 over x. The derivative of e to the x would just be e to the x. The derivative of tan inverse of x would be 1 over 1 plus x squared. So I would not need to use the chain rule on any one of these functions over here. right? And all of these functions over here in the right column, I would have to use the chain rule. And you can see that the inside part on each of these is more complicated than just x. So over here, I have 2x plus 3 raised to the ninth power, right? So here, the inside part is 2x plus 3. It's more complicated than just x, so you would use the chain rule on this problem. Over here, the inside part's just x, right? No need to use the chain rule. Same thing here. Here, I have x squared plus 3x plus 1, right? So um, I would have to use the chain rule. It's The inside part here is more complicated than just x. Uh, same thing here, and in this example, right, with the sine and sine of 3x, you may say, well, look, that inside part is not really that much more complicated at all, right, than this inside part here. It's just different by a 3, uh, but it's still a chain rule problem in and of itself, right? Uh, you could use trigonometric identities to change this in here, but, um, but you don't really need to, and if you're just going to take the derivative and that's all you want to do, 
right, then this is a chain rule problem because of that three right there. Right. Here, the inside part of the ln is cosine of x, right? That's not just x. Over here, no chain rule. Here, this is a chain rule problem. For exponential functions, sometimes the inside part is a little bit hard to spot. If you remember from the previous video, we talked about that on a lot of these chain rule problems, the inside part is the exponent here. And so um, over here we have x squared. That's more complicated, right, than just x here. So this is a chain rule problem. The inside part is more complicated than just x. And here the inside part of this tan inverse function is 3 minus x. That's more complicated than just x like it is over here. So this is a chain rule problem. All right, so use the chain rule when the inside part is more complicated than just x. All right, so here's our first example where we are going to use the chain rule to take the derivative of a function. So uh, we want to find f prime of x, and here f of x is 3x minus 1 to the 11th power. So the first uh, thing that you want to do is identify the problem as a chain rule problem. And just as we saw there, right, the inside part here is more complicated than just x. If this were just x to the 11th power, then we would have no problem taking the derivative and it wouldn't be a chain rule problem. We could just use the power rule. But here the inside part is more complicated than just x, so this is a chain rule problem. Once you identify a problem as being a chain rule problem, then what you want to do is to identify the inside parts and the outside part of the function, right? And this is just what we were doing in the previous video where we talked about composition of functions, right? The inside part, that's usually pretty easy for people to spot because it's just sort of most of the time naturally sitting there on the inside. So right here I have 3x minus 1, right? That's going to be the inside part here. And then if I sort of remove that 3x minus 1 and replace it back with an x, that's going to give me the outside part here. So the outside part is x to the 11th power. Okay, so this function here, f, is built up by taking the inside part and plugging it in for x right here. If I did that, I'll wind up with exactly what I have for f. Okay. Once you identify the inside parts and the outside parts, right, um, then it is just a matter of following through with the three steps of the chain rule. So let's do that. So step number one, right, was to take the derivative of f, we said, but here really I just like to think of that as the outside part. So take the derivative of the outside part. All right, so in the outside part is x to the 11th power. That's a power function. So we would use the power rule to take its derivative. We would bring the 11 down, right, and we would drop the exponent by 1. So 11 mi minus 1 is 10 here, okay? So that's step 1 of the chain rule. Step 2 of the chain rule is the part that I like to call leave the inside part alone. So in other words, Everywhere where there would be an x in the derivative of the outside, you plug the inside part here. Okay, So it kind of looks like when you're working these problems, you just don't do anything with the inside part. So, so that's why I have leave the inside part alone. But re remember, technically, it is plug the inside part into the derivative of the outside part. Okay. All right, so one more step of the chain rule, and that is to multiply by the derivative of the inside part. Right, uh, looking at the inside part, right? The inside part is 3x minus 1, and the derivative of 3x minus 1 is just 3. So I would multiply by 3, and there I'm done taking the derivative, right? Um, that's the third and last step of the chain rule. Of course, here I could do some minor simplification, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Just multiply that 3 times the 11 right here, and you would get 33 times 3x minus 1 to the 10th power. So that is the derivative of um, this polynomial function using the chain rule.